that Jules Verne predicted Paris in the year 1960. And Jules Verne, during the time of the American Civil War, predicted that we would have glass skyscrapers, gas-fired engines, something that looks like a fax machine, something that looks like the internet. He was right on the button. And how did he do it? Well, the same methodology I use. Jules Verne picked the brains of some of the finest technologists, engineers, and scientists of his time. That's as close as you can get to the future. And in Visions, a consensus is growing among America's top computer experts. Computers will become so small and ubiquitous that they will be invisible everywhere and nowhere. So powerful that they will disappear from view. Next call for Dr. Michio Kaku comes from Manhattan. Go ahead, Christine. Hello, Dr. Kaku. It's such an honor to speak with you. Thank I you. have a few questions for you about aliens. Mm -hmm. If aliens were to come to Earth with aliens were to come to Earth with hostile intentions, do you believe it's possible there could be both good and bad aliens, and the good ones would possibly help to protect us? And also, I read in the Financial Times a couple of years ago that Stephen Hawking said Earth might become uninhabitable in about 40 years. Could aliens have anything to do with this possibility? And finally, what is your general opinion of aliens and their interaction with us? Do you believe they could? in some way already be here? You ask a lot of very interesting questions. First of all, why don't they simply land on the White House lawn? Why don't the aliens simply have flying saucers, land on the White House <clears throat> lawn, and, and greet the President of the United States? Well, you have to look at it this way. If they can reach the Earth from a distant star system, they are thousands of years ahead of us in technology. And if you're walking down a country road and, and meet an anthill, do you go down to the ants and say, I bring you trinkets, I bring you beads, I give you nuclear energy, take me to your Aunt Queen, or perhaps you walk away or maybe even step on a few of them. So remember that if they're that advanced, they've already been watching us. They've already been looking at where we are. They don't have to land on the White House lawn. They don't have to prove anything. Also, if you're a deer in the forest, who do you fear the most, the developer or the hunter? Well, you may say to yourself, the hunter is dangerous. The hunter can kill the deer. The hunter wants to kill the deer. The hunter wants to eat the deer. But if you think about it, the real danger is the developer. Because the developer couldn't care less about the deer. The developer just wants to pave the forest over. And of course, all the forest creatures are going to die because their habitat has been paved over. So I think that if we do meet alien civilizations from outer space, first of all, A, they're not going to be hostile because they'll have had thousands of years to work out their sectarian, religious, fundamentalist, racial problems. B, they'll have plenty of deserted planets to plunder. They don't have to land on the Earth. They can land on Mars and uninhabited planets where they have minerals and, and different kinds of raw materials. But C, if they do come to the Earth, they're not going to land on the White House lawn. What they'll do is they'll send robotic probes throughout the galaxy. How many planets are there that can sustain life? Perhaps billions of planets in our own galaxy. To explore the galaxy, what you do is you send a robotic probe. Lands on a moon, because moons are stable, and it creates a factory. A factory that creates copies of itself, a thousand. And then maybe a thousand robots fly out to a thousand moons. Each one creates a thousand more robots. So starting one robot, you get a thousand, then a million, then a billion, trillion, quadrillion, and pretty soon you populate the entire galaxy. Where have you seen that before? You've seen that before twice. First in the movie 2001. Perhaps they're already here. Perhaps they're on our moon, and we are too primitive to have a moon base to detect it. So the movie 2001 should have been called 2100. When we do have an operating moon base that can detect a probe left over from an ancient civilization maybe millions of years ago. And where else have you seen this? In a virus. That's how viruses colonize your body. Our body consists of about 50 trillion cells. How is it that one molecule can colonize your lungs and make you sneeze? It does it by landing on a cell creating hundreds of copies of itself, which then go out and land on other cells. So that's the way I think a realistic visitation would take place. Maybe they're already here. Maybe they're already on our moon. I don't know. 100% sure of extraterrestrial life? 
I would say near 100%, because if you calculate how many planets are habitable, well, we have 100 billion plant, uh, stars within our own galaxy. Half of the stars probably have planets, a half. Maybe 10% of them have Earth-like planets. Maybe 10% of them, in turn, have liquid oceans on them. Maybe 10% of them, in turn, have microbial life. And you just do the math, and you come up with a few thousand. A few thousand planets just within our galaxy should have intelligent life. So how come they don't visit us? Well, maybe they made the transition from type zero to type one, from being a primitive civilization like ours to becoming a planetary civilization, but they never made it because of global warming. Uh, never made it because of global warming, uh, nuclear warfare, biotechnology to becoming a civilization that could, in fact, explore the galaxy. Mkaku is the website, mkaku.org, if you'd like to get in touch with Dr. Kaku. Bo Washington. Go ahead, Robert. Uh, Dr. Kaku, my pleasure. Uh, just a couple of short questions. Why does the Earth spin on its axis? Is the tilt approximately 23 degrees, is that an accident? And lastly, why do other celestial bodies not spin? Okay, I'm finished. Okay, well, first of all, we think that the Earth was hit by an asteroid perhaps uh, three and a half to four and a half billion years ago. And other planets also were hit by an asteroid. In fact, if you take, let, take a look at Venus, Venus spins backwards. All the planets go in the same ecliptic plane because we came out of the sun. Venus, however, in its own axis, spins the wrong way, spins backwards, because we think it was hit by an asteroid during the age of meteors, the chaotic period during the formation of our solar system. Mars also tilts at 23 degrees, but Uranus, Uranus tilts 90 degrees off the ecliptic. Think of a rolling barrel. A rolling barrel is very much like Uranus as it uh, spins around the sun. So we think that the first billion years of the creation of our solar system was quite chaotic. We see evidence of this on the moon. Every time the moon comes out, it's pockmarked. And those meteorite craters date back to the age of meteors during the first billion years of our, of our formation of the solar system. So it turns out that all these are artifacts. The fact that planets spin, the fact that they spin on their axis in a certain angle, all of that is due to the chaos of the first billion years of the formation of our solar system. Next call for Dr. Kaku comes from Tampa. Hi, Tampa. Philip. Hello, Dr. Kaku. How are you doing? It's a pleasure, and I want you to know that I'm a fan. Thank you. And the question I have is two questions. One, how difficult is it for a theoretical physicists such as yourself or a scientist to believe in um, possibly creation? And what's your take on always the struggle between creationists and evolutionists? The next part of the question is, is it wishful thinking to think that as old as the earth is and as far as we are in um, I guess in, in, evol in evolving that there's some other planet out there planet X X billion light years away that's going to be exactly like us could it be that we'll never be able to communicate with such a life form well yes some very interesting questions first of all just last week uh, astronomers did identify a planet 20 light years from Earth that seems to be almost like a carbon copy of our Earth capable of having liquid oceans. But as you point out, communicating with an intelligent civilization in outer space is quite difficult. It would take 20 years, 20 years for a signal from the Earth to go to that planet, another 20 years for a return message. So a conversation would be impossible. It would take 40 years just for a round trip to this nearby planet. So the only way we can make a dialogue with extraterrestrials is if they come visit us. If they land on the White House lawn, then of course we can have an intimate conversation with them. But a conversation with a distant uh, civilization would be impossible simply because of the time it takes to go back and forth. And also, by the way, I think that some people think that we should try to communicate with these extraterrestrial civilizations. I don't think so. I think we should find out what their intentions are first. Look what happened to um, the Aztec Empire of Mexico when they encountered Cortez. Montezuma made the biggest mistake in history when he thought that Cortez was a god. 
when in fact he was a plunderer, a bloodthirsty plunderer that destroyed the entire Aztec civilization. So I think we should wait. There's no rush. Once we do find messages, eavesdrop on messages from alien civilizations, we should just take it easy. Wait to decipher their language, find out the level of their mathematics, and then make contact with them once we realize that they are in fact friendly and have no hostile intentions toward us. Please clarify the shape of a black hole for the many of us who are still confused. This is an email. Does it appear as a water drain that all things fall into? If so, what would the side view or the bottom view look like? The typical view of a black hole is incorrect. However, it is difficult to explain how black holes look because, they, of course, they bend in the fourth dimension. First of all, everybody knows the funnel idea. You have like a whirlpool with water falling in this way. But you see, black holes are basically spherical. They're spherical. They're like a ball. So what is this, what is this funnel? That funnel is only a representation, a, uh, a three-dimensional representation of a four-dimensional object. You cannot draw four-dimensional objects on a TV screen. That's why we have this fiction of having this whirlpool. However, there is a black hole you can see tonight. Uh, just go outside, look in the direction of Sagittarius, and there is a raging black hole in the direction of Sagittarius. It's at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. When the Earth goes around the sun, some people say, well, what does the sun go around? Everything goes around something. The moon goes around the earth. Earth goes around the sun. Sun goes around a blank. Well, the sun goes around a black hole in the direction of Sagittarius. We can't see it yet. Our telescopes are not powerful enough to peer into dust clouds to actually see this object. But we think it's going to be spherical. It'll be spinning, but it's going to be spherical. It'll be basically a black sphere. That's more correct. However, if you fall through the event horizon, most books say that at the very center of a black hole there is a dot. And as you go hit the dot, you die. That's the old picture. We don't believe that anymore. All black holes that we see in outer space are spinning. They're spinning rapidly. The equations say that a black hole should collapse into a ring, a rotating ring rotating very rapidly. And if you fall through the ring, you don't necessarily die you can fall right through the ring into a parallel universe. So a black hole might, might possibly be a gateway to a parallel universe. We'll never know because, of course, it takes thousands of years to reach one. And if you send an object through the ring, it's very difficult for the object to come back out and tell he was on the other side of a black hole. But the mathematics seems to indicate that there's a looking glass a looking glass at the center of a black hole, that this ring is the frame of Alice's looking glass. And if you put your hand through the ring, your hand does not destroy itself. It actually winds up in a parallel universe. Michio Kaku is our guest on Book TV's In Depth this month. We have about a little less than an hour left. Woodside, California. Rich, hi. Uh, hi, Dr. Kaku. Um, my question is a, a, uh, one of the uh, Gnocchi experiments, one of the thought experiments. You spoke earlier of Einstein's thought experiment with regards to the, uh, the speed of light. Um, I'm wondering, have, scientists, have physicists ever, uh, because we know that uh, energy and mass are quantized, um, have, we, have scientists ever done a thought experiment on what it would mean if space and time, which are thought to be continuous, are in fact quantized? We scientists, Rich, have thought about the possibility that maybe there is a shortest distance, a shortest amount of time. We can divide time into smaller and smaller slices. And so the question is, when you move, when you move, are you actually going through many time slices? Or distance, how, fine, how finely can you slice a distance before you hit the ultimate distance? At the present time, we see no such uh, lattice structure, as we call it, no discrete structure. We have the Large Hadron Collider, which allows us to calculate trillions of a second, which allows us to measure distances and times that are just astronomically small, unbelievably small, and we see no gradation, we see no choppiness in the structure of space and time. However, once you go to string theory, then there is a possibility that there is the shortest distance. If you take a look at string theory, there is something called the Planck length and the Planck energy. The Planck length is the size of the string itself. 
It is the smallest object you can create in string theory. So in some sense, maybe there is, maybe there is such a thing as the smallest distance, which is the size of the string itself. The Planck length has all 